Last week, I promised you a two minute Tuesday on cause and effects. We're going to cover what they are, why you need them, and who should take responsibility for them. Cause and effects are, in principle, very straightforward. It's the logic behind a system. If we input this, the cause, what will happen, the effect. When we're referring to cause and effect in relation to smoke ventilation systems, we're usually talking about a chart. For small buildings, they look something like this. For large buildings, they're more like this. So, as you can see, they go from very simple documents, which anyone can figure out, to exceptionally complex documents that require you to have an intimate knowledge of the project. By looking at the chart, whoever's commissioning or testing the system can tell exactly what it's supposed to do for every possible input. It allows the system to be tested to make sure it's working exactly as it's planned. Now let's have a look at why you need them. If the system doesn't work as it's supposed to, not only will it endanger life by not performing its job, it could actually put lives at risk in other ways, for example due to depressurization. It also makes life incredibly difficult for the fire and rescue service. I was speaking with a firefighter recently who attended a residential fire. Instant command told him that the building was beginning to fill up with smoke and that they were concerned they were losing the building. He was a bit puzzled as the fire was only small and only on one floor, so he stuck his head into the smoke shaft and could see vents open all the way up through the building. The cause and effects hadn't been set up properly and the smoke was flowing from floor to floor contaminating the whole building. So whilst they were thankful that things weren't as bad as they had feared, had the fire been any worse that contamination between floors would have cost lives. So now we know why cause and effects logics are important for a building, we've got another question which I was asked recently, who's responsible for them? The person designing the system is responsible for producing the cause and effects, the commissioning engineer is responsible for making sure the system follows the cause and effects, and the responsible person or their maintenance engineer has the duty to make sure it stays that way. I hope that's opened up the world of cause and effects, and so that's it from me. If you found it helpful, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.